Corey Sandhagen. <sighs> okay. Corey Sandhagen went on Ariel Helwani's program today. Now, in fact, I record the same time that Ariel records. And so this is happening right now. I'm getting updates. I'm getting updates and... <laughs> so, Sandhagen... Sandhagen goes on Ariel's program, which, not for nothing, is an institution. Like, I am a sought-after, acquired voice within this space. I mean, right? You, you must log in. You go to YouTube, you got you click the little button. And if you're doing something, maybe you'll even come back. Maybe you'll catch, yeah, catch you later, Chael. But you don't do the same thing with Ariel, right? Your, your, your human behaviors are different. You listen to Ariel live. You listen to him in the moment. Okay. So, while Sam Hagen is on this very popular program, known as the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani, he states what he's going to do moving forward. Corey Sandhagen says, I beat Cheeto less than a year ago. Me and Sean should be Sean and I, but let's not be the grammar police over here. Is definitely one of the most exciting fights that you can certainly make in the UFC. All right, let me try that one. Let me let me try. <laughs> this thing is so grammatically messed up. Let me actually try this one as though I am him. I beat Cheeto less than 365 days ago. Me and O'Malley is definitely one of the most exciting fights you can certainly make in the UFC. I mean, there's some extra verbiage there, right? That, it's okay. I'm really not here to be the grammar police. I just, I, but I wanted to try that one out. All right, now let's move on. Let's get to the good stuff. In 2014... I'm going to try to acquire some famous guy leverage. Maybe I should start hanging out with some rappers. I'll get some tattoos on my face. Now, all of this is in reference to how are you going to get a tile shop? That's what all of this is in reference to. Because Corey's done everything else. He has broken in to the covenant industry. No question about it. He has proved himself at one of the trickiest damn weight classes. He is an awesome fighter. Corey has fought in feature bouts against the right guys, but at the wrong time. I mean, not for nothing, even if the Aljo fight didn't go his way, he still fought Aljo. That's a world champion. That's a pay-per-view, marquee, box office, sold-out arena draw. Maybe he had him at the wrong time but he has learned how to get the right matches. He's been a main event. It was a really incredible fight, Corey's last one. Because if you were to juxtapose and look at the Aljo fight where Corey got taken down, and we found out just how good Aljo is on your back, but it was one of those spots where Corey himself had made a statement of, hey, I'm not all that good at wrestling. He actually said those words. So when he goes into his last fight and he starts scoring all those takedowns, you go, wow, man, this guy's getting even better. And Sandhagen is awesome. Like, I would never give Sandhagen a hard time if he wasn't flat awesome. And Ariel loves him. I mean, Ariel has been singing the praises. I can just tell you privately. Ariel has been singing the praises to me about Corey Sandhagen long before Sandhagen was a top draw, was a top three ranked guy, was a main offender. He really was. He saw something special here. But there's an incredible irony in Corey Sandhagen laying out within his own mind what he needs to do to get a top billing opposite Sean O'Malley. There's an incredible irony. Because the night they were going to make him the number one contender and put him in the top spot for the championship, and all he had to do was say me. They said to him, who should be next for the championship? All he had to do was say, this guy, that's it. That's it. He didn't have to do anything else. And if he had been following the sport, if he had been following his own division, he would have known. He would have had the sense that God gave geese that they were getting ready to do the Montreal screw job 
on Aljo. They were getting ready to take to pull the carpet out from Aljo. Right? Everybody's got a big problem when Peter, when you rob Peter to pay Paul. Everybody's got a problem with that, except for Paul. Paul doesn't mind if you rob Peter to pay Paul. There's one person that's okay with that scenario. It's Paul. And Sandhagen with the handlebars was getting ready to be paid Paul. And he didn't follow his own division. And he passed it right on over to Aljo. And that little earpiece that the guy holding the microphone, everything gets put in rewind. That goes back to the truck, goes back to the producer, goes back to a text message, goes back to the press conference that gets dropped that night from the person that wrote the PR sheet. Aljo's next for the title. So it's just an irony. Like, could you imagine what he said? Could you imagine? Could you imagine Stan Hagen? He is willing to rap. Like, rapping's not that easy to do. Rapping's not that easy to do. Like, you've got to have certain rhythms. It's not easy to break into the rap game. And or his masterful idea is to put a tattoo on his face. And the reason that's ironic is what incredibly hard things to do. Learning how to beatbox, er, learning how to beatbox and or tattooing your face in a juxtaposition up against standing in the octagon with Joe Rogan and saying, this guy, <laughs> that's all, that's all he had to do to get a world title shot. All he had to do was to follow the sport and his own division and know what we were setting up. And now he's at a point where he's going to rap and or put a tattoo on his face. Well, I, as the single largest and most influential voice in this space, I don't say that to be a jerk, by the way. You see those numbers right next to where you click. You see my numbers compared to anybody else's numbers as the single biggest voice in this space and a man of his word. One thing a gangster does not do is lie. I will cover you, Corey Sandhagen. I will cover you inside out. I will cover you day after day. I will do my part. I will do a great job. If you do one of those two, you don't have to rap and tattoo your face. If you rap, or you tattoo your face, you do either one of those things, I give you my word, I will cover you like no one's ever covered you before. You don't have to do both, either rap for me or tattoo your face. I'm in, and I'm not joking.